What's going on, family? This is Scrap of Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. We're going to continue with Fantasy Matches, Battle of the Legends, Volume 7. Now, right now, we're looking at Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Smoking Joe Frazier, career 1965, 1976, 1981. 1976, he fought George Foreman for the second time. He retired, came back in 1981 to fight Jumbo Cummings, and he would retire. 32, 4, 1, 27 knockouts would be his record. He lost to four fighters. Oh, he lost four times. He lost to two different fighters, Muhammad Ali twice, and George Foreman two times. As we go down to Iron Mike Tyson, originally from Brownsville, Brooklyn, moved to Casco, New York at the age of 12 with the legendary Custom Model. He had a career of 1985. His first fight was with Hector Mercedes. 1989, his last fight was with Kevin McBride. He had a record of 58, 50, 44, 6, and uh, two no contests, if my memory serves me correctly. When I do these, it's always at the top of the head. Uh, I don't look at anything, I just remember. So it was four, uh, 58 total fights, 50 wins, 44 knockouts, 6 losses, and like two no contests. Uh, it was Mike Tyson. So let's break some of these fighters down so we can get a better perspective on who had a better career and who we thought would win if these two fighters would have collided. Now, Smoking Joe Frazier was born January 12, 1944 in Beaufort, South Carolina. He died November 7, 2011. He was 67 years of age at the time of his death in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was an Olympic gold medal in 1964, and um, he would bring home that gold medal. He was an alternate when he had lost in the trials to uh, Buster Mathis. And then when Buster Mathis got injured, he stepped in and won the gold medal. He stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches and had and weighed basically 195 or 197 to 229 pounds. He had a 73 inch reach. He was managed by Cloverlane Incorporated and trained by Eddie Futch and Yancey Durham. Named 4 from 1965 to 1981. He had a fight record of 37 total bouts, 32 wins, 27 about a knockout route. He had four losses and one draw. Now, Smoking Joe Frazier was known for his Philadelphia left hook, walk-in, bob and weave, relentless attack like a locomotive, freight train, and he came forward at all times. He was in the Hall of Fame in 1980 and International Hall of Fame in 1991. Now, he fought five champions. The champions he would fight would be Jimmy Ellis twice. He knocked him out in the fifth round and in the ninth round. Now, I'm going to do a series of the greatest left hooks ever thrown in championship history. Uh, all weight divisions, straight right hands, other cuts, uh, you know, so on and so forth. But I'll be doing left hooks, and this will be in that series. When he fought uh, Jimmy Ellis in Madison Square Garden, it's one of the most devastating left hooks ever thrown. That was in the ninth round. Um, so he fought Jimmy Ellis two different occasions. He fought Bob Forster, who was a light heavyweight champion, knocked him out in two rounds. He would fight Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. Those are the uh, four... Uh, heavyweights that he would fight as far as champions. The fifth one would be a Canadian champion by the name of George Chevalo. And he defeated him as well. So uh, let's go through it. He went six rounds with uh, Billy Daniels, knocked him out in the sixth round. Uh, ten rounds with Ringo, Oscar Bonavena, and Madison Square Garden. That was very scary because he went down two different occasions. He did get up, and that shows resiliency. And that's very important to take in consideration when you're looking at of fighters and who you think would have won against who and so on and so forth. You got to break all that down. Uh, he got up two different uh, occasions and he never went back down for the third time and he wound up winning the fight against Ringo Oscar Bonavena in the 10th round of Madison Square Garden. Everybody was looking on because he was an up-and-coming fighter. I think it was his 15th fight or so, 11th fight. I think it was his 11th fight. And um, he had to show and improve and he did. He had a whole corporation behind him, Larry Merchant, HBO, commentator was involved. They all had shares. So, um, you know, the money was in their pocket. So he would go 10 rounds at Eddie Machen. And um, he knocked him out in the 10th round. He would knock out uh, George Chivalo in four rounds. He would knock out Buster Mathis. Buster Mathis, he fought in the amateurs. For the trials, just for the other trials. And then he fought him as a professional and he knocked him out in 11 rounds. Jerry Quarry knocked him out in seven rounds. That was one of the best fights that I've seen at that particular time. Jerry Quarry came forward as well, but he also boxed. 
but he would get lured into a slugfest when necessary. Now, this is very important to look at when we're looking at Iron Mike Tyson. Because Jerry Quarry would get in there and slug with Joe Frazier. Now, the thing with Joe Frazier is he couldn't stand there and slug with Mike Tyson the way he slugged with Jerry Quarry. It took him uh, seven rounds to get rid of Jerry Quarry, and that was basically on a cut. But he couldn't uh, get rid of him, and if he stood in there in front of Mike Tyson slugging with him like that for seven rounds, he would go himself. Let's keep that in mind. He would fight Jimmy Ellis two different occasions, as I said, uh, nine rounds and, and five rounds. We got him out of there both times. Uh, Bob Foster knocked him out in two rounds. Muhammad Ali, he lost to him in Madison Square Garden in 10 rounds. He lost to him, he defeated him in 15 rounds in Madison Square Garden. One of the greatest fights of all times, 1971, March 8th. And uh, 15 rounds he lost to him uh, in Manila. Actually, it was actually 14 rounds. But um, that was because Eddie Fuss had to step in. Joe Frazier couldn't see. And um, a lot of people don't know that Joe Frazier was blind in one eye throughout the majority of his career. And George Foreman, second round knockout in Kingston, Jamaica. He was bounced around, as they say, like a rubber ball. And then he lost a second time in about, uh, I'll say, five rounds. He was stopped. I am Mike Tyson. Can I say about this young man? I am Mike Tyson. Now the thing with him, he had 24 first round knockouts. Very important to take note of. He was born June 30th, 1966, in uh, Brooklyn, New York, Bronzeville, uh, New York. He stood five foot ten and a half inches and weighed 212 to 239 pounds. He had a 71 in each reach. He was managed by Bill Caton, Jim Jacobs, Shelley Finkel, trained by Kevin Rooney, Richard Ketty. Freddie Roach, I think Jeff Finette was in there with him for a little bit. Um, the thing with Mike Tyson, he was the youngest heavyweight champion of all time at the age of 20. And uh, Floyd Patterson was 21 years of age at that time. He fought 13 champions. He won uh, 10 or 11. And he lost against two. So the champions that he fought, Evander Holyfield, Larry Holmes, Michael Spinks, Tony Tucker... Alfonso Ratliff, Pinklin Thomas, James Bonecluster Smith, Ola Norris, Tony Tubbs, Trevor Burbick, Lennox Lewis. Uh, that's who I can think of right now at the top of my head. I know Tony Tubbs, he knocked him out in two rounds in Tokyo. James Butler Douglas, he was knocked out himself in Tokyo. Lennox Lewis knocked him out in eight rounds. Ola Norris was in no contest in one round. Trevor Burbick, he killed him in two rounds. That was in Atlantic City, I was at that fight. Um, when he fought Jane Bonecrusher Smith, I was at that fight as well at Madison Square Garden. Um, Michael Spinks knocked him out in one round. Larry Holmes got rid of him in a few rounds. Bruce Seldom knocked him out in one round. The Olympians he fought, he fought four Olympians. Tyrell Biggs knocked him out in seven rounds. Henry Tillman knocked him out in one round. Evander Holyfield knocked him out. Uh, he was knocked out himself by Evander Holyfield in 11 rounds, and he was disqualified in the third round by Mills Lane with a famous ear biting incident. He was knocked out by Lennox Lewis as well. That was in the eighth round. So let's kind of sum this up. Smoking Joe Frazier came up at an era where you had heroin. Plenty of drugs. Prostitution was high. Gambling was high. Uh, the mob was high. The thing with... Um, and he was over. He was able to uh, surpass that. He got through that. So he was mentally strong. The thing with him... He was um, managed by Cloverland Incorporated. Now the thing with that was... He didn't have any type of uh, say-so in his career. Because he had backers. They all had shares in his... Uh, and his stake, Larry Merchant, as I said before, part of HBO, he was a part of that. And they ran his career. They paid him a salary, and they pretty much set up all his fights for him. As for Iron Mike Tyson, he couldn't surpass. He was in the 1985 drug era with the crack, and uh, he was in the street life. So mentally, he was not strong. He couldn't, he didn't have the discipline, is my point, as Joe Frazier did. So Mike Tyson uh, 
We never really got a chance to see the best of Mike Tyson because he was always drinking. He, you know, he was always on uh, drugs of some kind when he was fighting. When he fought uh, Trevor Burbick, he had syphilis. You know, he just wasn't. It's hard to give a good reading on Mike Tyson because he never came in there hundred percent. However, Mike Tyson would fade after the sixth round. And that's the round that most fighters will fade because they become frustrated if they can't, especially if they're knockout artists. If they can't get you out of there by at least the sixth round, it's a different territory for them. Joe Frazier proved that he could do that. He went 15 rounds a lot of times in his career. And um, he showed resiliency. And remember, he was blind in one eye. And he still was able to get his man out of there. That's for Mike Tyson. He didn't pass the test with some of the big fighters. Example, Evander Holyfield. Couldn't get past Holyfield. Couldn't get past Lennox Lewis. Couldn't get past James Buster Douglas. Now, James Buster Douglas had the perfect strategy that particular evening. He was a perfect specimen that particular evening. But we're not talking about James Douglas. We're talking about a smoking Joe Frazier, a man who stands right in front of you. But we are talking about discipline. And, um... He got a lot of these guys out of there. Tony Tucker, he didn't get out of there. He was very uh, frustrated with Tony Tucker. He did put it on after the second round when he was rocked with an uppercut. And he finished the fight, and he was able to win the fight. And that was the IBF championship strap. Now, the thing with that particular belt was that they fought. Tony Tucker and James Butcher Douglas fought for the IBF strap. That was a relinquish from, from uh, Michael Spanks. Michael Spanks was stripped. From that HBO tournament, when he was in there with uh, Jerry Cooney, they stripped him. So those two gentlemen had fought for the title, and that was Tony Tucker and um, James Buster Douglas. Douglas quit in that fight. He said, this is too much for me. I'm out of here. And Tony Tucker, uh, you know, gave Mike Tyson the business for 15 rounds. So mentally, Mike Tyson couldn't deal with a lot of pressure. However... In my opinion, if Joe Frazier were to stand in there and try and slug with Mike Tyson, as he did with Jerry Quarry, he wouldn't be in there for seven rounds. He would be stopped himself. With the fighter we're talking about of Mike Tyson from 1986 to 1988. Any other time, Mike Tyson loses to Joe Frazier, in my opinion. So I just want my subscribers to drop in the comment section their opinion, who they think would have won. Give me an idea of what time in their careers that would have happened. Because remember, these were multiple times in their careers. So we got to be fair to these fighters. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Salute to my subscribers. Salute to Mike Tyson. And salute to Smoking Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier was a mean machine. He would have knocked out any of these guys. But with Mike Tyson, it depends on the Mike Tyson that showed up. Because Mike Tyson, if you look at his fight films early in his career, he was unbelievable. He just didn't have the mental strength, the testicle fortitude, to fight a guy like Frazier for more than five, for more than I would say seven to eight rounds. He couldn't continue taking that kind of punishment for that amount of rounds. He never showed that he could. So, uh, it was one of them cases where the longer the fight lasted, the less chance that Mike Tyson would have defeating Smoking Joe Frazier. He would have to try and get him out of there early. So thanks for hanging in there with me. This is all, all great fighters, and all great fights will never be forgotten on my channel. This has been Battle of the Legends, Volume 7. Look out for the next one. Peace.